saying things people already know out loud is tight. I am a collector. Australian legends. Funny segment. This is... Here I come. What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI, and they just dropped, well actually, this dropped yesterday, the Batman Returns pitch meeting from Ryan George on the new pitch meeting channel, which, uh, yeah, love that channel, love Ryan George's work. I actually recorded a reaction to this, and the audio fucked up. I don't even get me started, uh, my audio issues are coming from trying to use better, easier cameras, and for some reason it fucks up the audio sometimes, but I've run like a hundred tests this morning, so... We should be good, I got a backup audio running as well, just to be on the safe side. Just eat the damn oranges! Uh, and because I've already seen the Batman Returns pitch meeting already, ugh, uh, I'm gonna watch the Batman Forever one as well, which is actually my favourite Batman movie. Anyway, I was just looking into the microphone while I was saying that. My favourite Batman movie ever. Batman Begins. But Batman Forever is my sentimental favourite. Uh, we're gonna watch both of them. I don't remember Batman Returns... Uh, I remember it as a kid. But, I remember it not being anywhere near as big as Batman 1. Why do I keep looking at the microphone? Nowhere near as big as Batman 1. And, um, it was a fucking dark movie, man. And they talk about this in the pitch meeting, but I always was like, yeah, that movie was, uh, way less, um enticing to me as a kid because it was just so grim like the penguin character was just horrible i'm glad they mentioned about the penguin uh being made like well running for mayor in this friggin movie like that was always just something that i was like what like even as a, an adult watching it i was like huh so we're gonna have a look at the pitch meeting then we're gonna check out batman forever as well we'll talk a bit about that movie before that pitch meeting subscribe if you're new to the channel i'm rid of the covid i'm feeling my Feeling my fucking self. Come on, let's do it. I'm ready to do this reaction. Let's fucking check it out. Subscribe if I didn't say that. I think I did. Let's do it. Do you have a new Batman movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I figure we call this one Batman Returns. Oh, did Batman go somewhere? No. Did he buy some clothes in the wrong size? He might have, but no, he's just, he's back on the big screen. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. So at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna meet this couple called the Cobblepots, right? Okay. And they don't <sighs> like their newborn baby, so they try to drown him. Just leave him to die in the water. Oh, my God. We're starting the movie that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Doc, man, I'm telling you. Happy Meal toys out of this movie, right? Uh, yeah, that's not, they might not like this one too much this kid grows up and bites a guy's nose off yeah i remember um i think we used to get the little vehicles in the in the mcdonald's happy meal toy in the mcdonald's happy meals when i was a kid but don't worry we mcdonald's and batman came back with a vengeance for batman forever uh, there's blood spewing <laughs> everywhere oh no anyway so this baby ends up being found by some sewer penguins and so he grows up to be extremely penguin like because as you know <laughs> if an animal saves your life you take on that animal's traits i do know that believe it or not a couple of weeks ago i had my life saved by a pigeon oh wow sir does that mean you can fly or something no can't fly unfortunately but let me tell you i've been pooping on a ton of cars oh my god so for those that have seen the Pete Holmes X-Men videos, here, here bird, regurgitate a little bird style for you. <laughs> you need to go watch the Angel uh, Pete Holmes X-Men video, he j he rips on him for being a bird, non fucking hey bird, do you like your bell loose or in a bell shape? A little bit of peanut butter, <laughs> you fucking bird, <laughs> it's just giving me vibes of that. I'm not a bird! Bold words for a man with huge bird wings and- Hollow bones. <laughs> you f bird. So what else happens? Oh, okay, well there's this bad business guy named Max Shrek, right? <laughs> and what's his deal? Well he wants to build this power plant that'll secretly oh. suck up all of Gotham's power supply so then he'll control it. Why not just buy the current power plant then? Unclear, but yeah, his look, secretary Selena Kyle's gonna find out about the evil plan. Selena Kyle, huh? What's her deal? Oh, well, let me tell you sir, she's got glasses on so she's <laughs> absolutely hideous. Oh, sounds like an unattractive loser, yeah for sure. <laughs> and we find out that she's not man- <laughs> <laughs> I love the way Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan George says that. Sounds like an unattractive loser is what she sounds like. Like, it's so accurate to how 
um, heavy handed <laughs> the character telling is in these movies. Carried because of the glasses, obviously, and she has a cat that falls into her sink. Oh, and she mm-hmm. gives it a bowl of milk and therefore probably some diarrhea. I was gonna say. So since she finds out about Shrek's plan, he pushes. Yeah, her don't out feed cats milk, window. guys, or like push women out of windows. Oh, so she dies momentarily. Yeah, but then a bunch of cats lick her and nibble on her fingers, so she's fine now. Her life saving cat saliva is tight. It sure is, sir. So then she goes home and she starts behaving like a cat since, you know, cats saved her life. I totally understand. My poop comes out white now. So she starts to drink milk. (laughs) You fucking bird. Hey, on your way out of here, bird, do me a favor and don't shit on my car. I just hate it when your people shit on my car. (laughs) <laughs> like a cat, she starts destroying everything like a cat. I'm allowed to say your people because we're talking about birds, all right? Cat. Cats are notorious for their sewing skills. They are. And also, she <laughs> removes her glasses. Oh, she sounds hot now. Yeah, now she's hot. And Max Shrek <laughs> is going to be shocked that she turns up alive to work. Did he push someone out of his office window and then not look into the dead body situation at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Hey, wait, is Batman in this movie? Oh, he is actually. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay, great. It would be good if he was in it. <laughs> yeah, like Penguin's gonna do this attack on Gotham, right? And There's a lot of non-Batman in this movie. About it, right into his house. In his house? Yeah, it looks like he has like a system of mirrors set up so it shines directly into his house. Wouldn't that make it extremely easy to figure out who Batman is? Maybe. So he gets the <laughs> signal and gets into his Batmobile and drives into the city to burn a guy alive. Oh my god. Yeah, cause see, the thing about Batman as a character is that he loves to kill. Like later, he's gonna be thrilled to strap a bomb to a bad guy and have him explode to death. That fucking smile. Batman loved to kill. Can't get enough of it. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So anyway, <laughs> Penguin's gonna end up blackmailing Max Shrek, so now they're gonna work together. Work on what? Well, first of all, they're gonna improve Penguin's public image, because people see him as a sewer monster. How do they do that? Well, they stage this thing where a baby gets taken into an open <sighs> sewer, right? But then he emerges on this lift system and makes it seem like he saved the baby. The fact that he was ready to go with a lift inside an open sewer didn't raise any red flags for anyone? Nope, so now he's a hero and everybody <laughs> likes him. Well, okay then. So now Max Shrek decides it. Is... I love Danny DeVito. I love Frank Reynolds, especially from Always Sunny. All of his characters. He's in um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It looks nothing like him. He's so young. But is Danny DeVito's Penguin the worst Batman villain ever? We got some doozies in Batman and Robin. Bane comes to mind in Batman and Robin. I think I might go with Danny DeVito, though. This character was just fucked in every single possible fucking way. <laughs> I'm a villain, don't you see? Good to make this penguin guy mayor of the city. What? Yeah, cause see that would help with his building permits to have a guy on the inside. So he lures him with a fish and shows him some campaign offices he set up and that's when penguin bites a guy's nose off. So the plan is to make the violent fish and nose eating sewer guy mayor? That's what yes. they're going with. That makes sense. And then also Catwoman <laughs> wants to team up with penguin to take down Batman. Man. Oh, okay, gotcha. So what do they do? Well, Penguin kills this ice princess lady and then frames Batman for it. Oh, no. Yeah, and then also using the blueprints to the Batmobile, his goons hack it, and so he takes control of it for a little while. How'd they get blueprints for the Batmobile? Unclear. Oh, okay. And so what does Penguin want exactly? Yeah, well, he it sets this plan into motion where he's gonna kidnap all the firstborns of wealthy families in Gotham. Oh, man, it's gonna be hard for Batman to stop that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because he he just has them loaded onto this super slow moving train thing, so Batman just stops that and that's all over. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so that's all done and taken care of, but now Penguin wants to blow up the city with a bunch of penguins he, he controls that this? have rockets strapped to them. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to stop that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Alfred manages to reverse the signal, so they just turn around. How does Alfred manage that? Fuck Technology, Alfred. I suppose. So that's all done. That works. And then there's gonna be this big showdown, and all the main characters are gonna be there. Oh boy. And Penguin's gonna like fall into some toxic waste, and Catwoman's gonna wanna kill Shrek, but Batman Batman's gonna stop her. Oh, is he suddenly not into killing? Yeah, he's suddenly not into (laughs) killing anymore. So he's like, let's just send Shrek to jail. And then he rips off his mask and also somehow his eye makeup. Why is he revealing his secret identity in front of Shrek if he doesn't plan on killing him? Well, because he's trying to have a moment with Catwoman by revealing his identity to her. No, she already knows his identity, but... 
Okay. So then Shrek <laughs> shoots both of them, <laughs> but he's Batman, so he doesn't die. And what about Catwoman? Well, so she has nine lives because some cats licked her in an alley earlier, remember? Right, that's true. So then she electrocutes herself and Shrek. Oh, a very electric cat person. And then Penguin pops out again, but then dies immediately. So some penguins have a little funeral procession for He's horrifying, man. Do that. Very weird. And then it's going to turn out that Catwoman's still alive. Oh, she still has a life left. She did. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great movie, but did Batman ever get cleared for the murder of that ice princess? Oh, yeah, you know, I did forget about Yeah, what is this shit about? For murder. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. We'll tell you what, maybe we'll have an opportunity to close that plot hole in like, I don't know, three decades or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, if we feel like it. Yeah, I did not get... I, I did not hear this rumor that they're going to be resolving old Batman plot holes in Flashpoint Paradox. Um, I think that the success that Marvel saw with the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home movie, I, I don't think DC is going to exceed No Way Home, but in terms of what DC has been achieving with their movies, I think Flashpoint is going to be their No Way Home. And hopefully it's a way to organize all of their history and their continuity and get some sort of clear understanding for the fans about what happened when and where all this shit happens because i mean you know the dc fucking timeline especially recently suicide squad has uh affleck in it so that means it's in that which also means that they exist in this other universe which is now the universe that peacemaker is in and we've got kite man and matter eater lad and uh, like all like it's so confusing what is going on in what part of what universe with DC. So Flashpoint Paradox can't come soon enough. I'm super fucking pumped for that. But let's have a look at the pitch meeting for my favorite Batman movie as a kid. Wow, I'm typing very slow. Um, Batman Forever. Jim Carrey as the Riddler. With Tommy Lee Jones as an insane over-the-top version of Two-Face. Um, it was a fucking wild ride Batman Forever was. And I had, I had so many of the toys. I had that Batmobile. I remember losing Batman's battery inside the engine, which sucked because you could hear it rattling around. But man, this movie just came out when I was like Batman crazy. And yeah, very fond memories of this movie. And I have watched it in recent years and it does not hold up. By the way, I haven't seen The Batman yet. And because I've left it so long at this point, I might just wait for it to come out on streaming and do a reaction to it. Because again, it's not like it's in some continuity with anything else in the DC universe and I need to see it before I see something else that's coming out. It's kind of in a pocket on its own, I guess, I believe. I'm not sure. So look out for a The Batman uh, reaction sometime in the future. But let's have a look at my boys. Oops. Let's have a look at my boys. We got Tommy Lee. We got Jim Carrey. Uh, who else was in this one? This was um, Nicole Kidman. Dr. Chase Meridian. I'm an expert in split personalities and criminal psychology. Really? Well, fucking hell. Luckily, you haven't run into Batman. <laughs> All right, let's check this shit out. Oh, you have a Batman movie for me? Yes, sir, I yes. do. And I thought instead of that dark yes, gothic look from the last two movies, we could change things up and make it super bright and colorful and neon. <laughs> oh, what made you want to change that? I went to a rave recently and I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> It does look like a rave. To get that weird energy out of your system. I also had some thoughts about some costume changes we could make. Uh, you know what, you can just take that up with the wardrobe people. I don't need to approve every little thing. You sure? Yeah, I mean, unless it's something insane. No, I mean, it's pretty straightforward stuff, I think. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. Well then, yeah, no, I'm sure that's fine. Great. Did he have nipples in Batman Forever? Was that the introduction of the bat nipples? I thought that came along in Batman and Robin. I'm trying to think if my Batman toys had nipples on them. You know who's got some fucking nipples? The bad guy from Dark Knight Returns. He's, he's got some nips. <laughs> so at the beginning of the movie, Two-Face is trying to kill Batman. Oh, what's his problem with Batman? Well, in court one day, a mob guy threw acid in his face, and so Two-Face is mad at Batman, because he was there and he didn't stop it, I guess. What, was Batman just sitting in court? Yeah, I guess so, I don't know. The point is, Two-Face <laughs> is crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Was he just in like the, is it the gallery they call it there? Just in his full bat suit. Somebody's like, hey, Batman. And he's like, shh, we're in court. 
<laughs> Never really thought of that. But I did like the attention to detail of putting him in the old Batman suit for the flashback as well. I just thought that was cool. Oh, and he's obsessed with killing Batman. But why? Because I said so. Fair enough. So Two-Face, the whole movie, he's trying to kill Batman and he keeps failing. Very, very cool. Yeah, at a certain point, he's chasing Batman and Batman drives up the side of a building. Wow, how does he get back down? It's cool. Unclear. Oh, okay. Anyway, anyway, so eventually Bruce Wayne is going to meet one of his employees, Edward Nigma, who's like obsessed with him, right? Okay. And he wants to work with Bruce on some brainwave manipulation tech. I know they're, they're all just trying to be like the Joker at this point. I think maybe the animated series had achieved some pretty significant success and the Joker was like the main villain in that. But can you imagine Jim Carrey as a Joker? Man, that would be wild shit technology but bruce says no so he just goes insane oh he does <laughs> yeah he just loses his mind because that's how we show that people are evil in these movies mental health issues of course so he starts sending these riddles yeah. to bruce wayne oh so he's the riddler now actually no he yeah, that's a good fucking point in all of these movies the villain is just a crazy person that's like every single time batman's not a crazy person even though he fucking does all the shit that he does but the villains they're the crazy ones that's a actually quite a um uh, interesting observation. He doesn't decide on becoming the Riddler until like 40 minutes later. <clears throat> he was already sending riddles before being the Riddler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay then. That's why he became the Riddler. Love interest for Bruce Wayne in this movie? She's a psychologist named Chase Meridian. And what does she do in the movie? Well, she flirts with Batman a whole lot. She uses yeah. the bat signal as a booty call. Oh, really? Yeah, and when he shows up, she's just all over him. I mean, oh, he does have nipples to sleep with Batman. And how does he react to that? Well, he says stuff like, it's the car, right? Chicks love the car. Oh. And he also says, are you trying to get under my cape, doctor? Wow. And when he gets in his car and drives <laughs> off, he's like, women. Well, that all sounds like dialogue that Batman should definitely say. <laughs> I agree, so he's gonna. <laughs> Perfect. So Bruce is gonna bring these riddles he's receiving to Chase, and she's gonna be like, well, whoever made these is obsessed with you. Oh, so he makes the connection to the obsessive Edward Nigma guy he met just- No, it should be Chase. She seems pretty obsessed to me. To be the world's greatest detective? Yeah, well, it's much easier for me to write a story <laughs> if he doesn't figure out super obvious things right away. That makes sense. So anyway, Bruce brings Chase to the circus, and the Riddler is watching the whole thing unfold on the news. Oh, that reminds me, did you catch the live broadcast of the circus on the news last night? Of course, I never miss a live broadcast of the circus on the news. That's a normal and regular thing that happens. It's perfectly normal. I know it is. That's why it's in the script. Well, good. So <laughs> why the fuck is the circus on the news? Oh my god, I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes beyond no sense. Like that I mean, people say like lazy writing. That's some lazy fucking writing. Uh, uh, he's at the circus. Well, how's Riddler know he's there? Uh, it's on TV. Why would it be? Chuck it on the news. Like, come on, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> anyway, Two-Face and his goons bust in, and they're like, you guys gotta tell us who Batman is, or we're gonna blow this whole place up. Oh, so what does Bruce do? Well, he yells, I'm Batman, but nobody hears him because the crowd's too loud. Not even Chase, who's sitting right next to him. That's what we're going with. So he just starts kicking butts all over the place. And nobody makes the connection that this billionaire is suddenly doing public kung fu? They don't, no. no. And then this acrobat family, the Graysons, they save the day. Oh, great. But they all die, except for the young Youngest one. Oh, bummer. What's his name? Dick. Hey, screw you, buddy. No, 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 no. That's his name. His name is Dick Grayson. No, oh, I know. Man. Oh, okay. So anyway, Bruce feels bad, so... I remember, I will try and find this and put the clip at the end. I might even do a little reaction to it at the end. Uh, but there was an old Aussie uh, comedy series that had this hilarious, like, press conference with, like, Batman, and a part of it was trying to explain who Dick Grayson was, but I'll, I'll track it down and we'll have a watch. So he adopts him. Oh, so he's a child? No, he's very clearly in his 20s. <laughs> so Batman adopts a fully grown adult man? <laughs> he sure does, yes. sir. And let me tell you, this grown man, he does laundry like a martial arts master. Oh, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about? And he's eventually gonna find out that Bruce is Batman, and he becomes Robin. <laughs> wow, how does he find out that Bruce is Batman? Well, he stumbles into the Batcave, and he sees everything. There's no security system in place down there? There is a security system, actually. It says the word intruder out loud and then puts all of Batman's stuff on display. Oh, a very <laughs> useless security system. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty useless. So then Two-Face and the Riddler team up. Oh, yeah. What's their plan? Two-Face and Riddler are gonna use that 
Batcave security system. Holmes and Riddler starts to, like, absorb everybody's intelligence. Oh, very rude. I had a guy do that to me once. It wasn't pleasant, but I enjoy cartoons a lot more now. Well, great. So eventually, Two-Face and Riddler break into Wayne Manor, and they just destroy a bunch of stuff, and they kidnap Chase, and they shoot Bruce in the frickin' face. Oh my god, they kill Batman? No, they just shoot him in the face, which knocks him unconscious. Oh, okay, but wouldn't Two-Face just shoot him again while he's unconscious? No, because the Riddler tells him not to. But that's literally been his one motivation the whole movie. Right, but yeah. the movie's not done yet. Oh, okay. So then Batman and Robin go to try Pretty to save typical. Chase and stop the bad guys. I love it. And Robin fights Two-Face and wants to kill him for revenge, but then he doesn't because Batman told him not to. Very mature. Yeah, so then he gets kidnapped too. Oh, that didn't work out. Not really, no. And so then Batman ends up in this situation where Riddler's like, hey, here are two people you care about. You can only save one of them. Man, it's going to be tough for Batman to get out of that situation. Actually, it's going to be Robin. super easy. Oh. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just tosses a batarang at this big glass thing that controls Riddler's brain waves, and then it fries his brain. Riddler decided to confront Batman under a big breakable thing that's the source of his brain power. He sure did, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So then Batman <laughs> saves the people he cares about, but then Two-Face pops out. Uh-oh, so what does Batman do? Well, Two-Face flips his little coin that he likes to flip, but Batman tosses a bunch of coins no. in the air, and so Two-Face falls to his death. What about that whole we shouldn't kill people thing? Yeah, no, see, the message is that murder is not an okay thing, but if you do something that leads to someone accidentally taking their own life, that's fine. Oh, educational messages are tight. Kids are gonna learn a lot from this. <laughs> yeah, and so Riddler goes crazy, right? And he can't even remember that Bruce is Batman, so his secret identity is safe. Well, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, except for Sugar and Spice, two faces, two girlfriends who were around mm. the whole time and saw everything and are still alive. Oh, mm. uh, whoops. Whoopsie. So what do you think? Well, they were, weren't they? I remember Sugar and Spice. Man, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, seeing Michael Keaton as Batman again is gonna make everybody happy. Right, I mean, that's if he agrees to do it. I mean, once he reads the... I'm afraid I've got some bad news. The scripts, I don't see why he'd say no. <laughs> no, that's a good point, you're right. He's not coming back. Michael Keaton turned down $15 million for Batman Forever after reading scripts. <laughs> yeah. 15 million's a lot of scratch, though. I will admit that. Um... Yeah, Batman Forever. What a fucking moment in time. Joel Schumacher, he did Batman Forever as well, did he? Actually, it kind of makes sense, yeah. The, it looked like, it, it, that was so right, it looked like a rave. All of the movie looked like a rave. It was just like neon science anywhere. It's like they literally said the old, like Batman Forever was too dark and their solution to that was like, well, let's get some lights. We'll keep it dark, we'll add some lights. Fucking works good, so that's good. But let, let me see if I can find this sketch. I don't even know if it fucking exists anymore. Let me, let me see if it's here. It's, it's so old, but it was hilarious. Well, now I just look like a liar. I tried to find the sketch and it doesn't exist. But I, all I remember is this female um, police officer. She's like, and uh, it says here that you've got a, uh, a ward named Dick. Is that right, Batman? <laughs> He's trying to, it, was a, it was a weird sketch. I, if I could track it down one day gonna randomly pop up on this channel i assure you and i'm sure nobody is waiting for it so let me know what you guys thought in the comments about the batman forever and batman returns pitch meetings uh, both were really good i'm positive the audio is looking fine on this one so we're in good shape um i'm rona free now as well so back to my good old fighting self which is pretty uh happy to see it was a fucking rough like four out of the seven days were actually pretty fucking bad to be honest but hopefully none of you guys get it but let me know what you guys think in the comments with all this and as always be well stay safe look after your friends see you in the next video peace mr wayne mr wayne ah mr wayne <laughs> Where's Robin? In his nest, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, Robin, off to the Batmobile. I'm afraid the Batmobile is in for service, sir. In that case, off to the Bat Datsun 120Y. <laughs> Persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir. I'll get drive through. A special, sir? McDonald's dynamic $2 dinner deal. A cheeseburger, small fries, and a small Coke, all for a phenomenal $2.
I'd like to see Batman forever. No, it's only at Macca's for a limited time. The dynamic $2 dinner deal, only after 5 p.m. So, uh, so tell me, w what are you wearing? Dark, charcoal gray, sculpted rubber bodysuit, matching cape, mask, utility belt, rubber boots, gloves. What?